After returning from their spying mission, Yehoshua Binun and Caleb ben Yefune argue in front of all of Israel and say to them, Ha'aretz asher avarnu va latur ota, tova ha'aretz me'od me'od. The land that we traversed and scouted is an exceedingly good land. I want to point out the repetition of the word me'od. In describing the land, Kaleb ben Yefune and Yoshua Binun say the land is very, very good. Let's look at three very different explanations of the repetition of this word me'od me'od. In Midrash Yalkut Shimoni, we find the following explanation. Me'od me'od bishnei olamot. The land is exceedingly good, very, very good, meaning in both worlds. There are various ways of understanding this Midrash, but I would like to suggest that it is a land that attempts to bridge the ideal and reality. It is good here, and it is a good ideally. And what makes something good is holding that tension between what is real, what is now, and what it is in potential. A different explanation comes from Emek Davar. The Emek Davar writes, Tova aretz mod mod, lo ba'u l'shavach, l'shavach ha'aretz, kama hi zavat chalav utvash. They did not intend to praise the quality of the land that it flows with milk and honey, for this is something everyone witnessed with their own eyes, and all the spies admitted to this as well. The Emek Davar continues, rather, they pointed out that there is no land that is similarly good in the entire world. Indeed, even though there are many countries in the world that are better than the land of Israel, it is known that anything that is constantly good ultimately leads to a lack of recognition of this goodness. In other words, what makes Israel, the land of Israel, so good is that maybe it's not as good as other places, but that lack of goodness creates a recognition of things when they are, in fact, good. And Mechdavar continues and writes, In addition, such constant goodness is wrapped in malevolence. When you experience an ever-flow of constant goodness, that comes with the risk of malevolence. As he writes, For sin crouches at the entrance of pleasure and delight, and nothing is worse than this. For a Mechdavar, goodness actually means that something is lacking in some measure, in some amount of goodness. And that's what makes the land so very, very good. We find a third explanation in Nantibo Shalom, who is teaching this in the name of several Rebis. And then Nantibo Shalom writes, Why is it exceedingly good? The land is given to those who fulfill the words of the words of the verse, be very, very humble of spirit. Me'od, me'od, have shafel ruach. For this reason, it is called the land of Kna'an, for it is given to those who are nichna'im, echoing the word Kna'an, those who surrender, meaning those who humble themselves. You know what makes the land good? It is good if you are humble of spirit. Only those who humble themselves, who show a spirit, a disposition, a personality that is able to surrender and receive, only those can perceive goodness. We are in a period of uncertainty, a period in which we are trying to enter into the unknown. Is this unknown good or bad? unknown, but it could be good if we perceive goodness not just in reality, but in the potential of any reality. We could perceive something as good if we recognize that things don't need to be perfect to be good. In fact, oftentimes if they're not perfect, we are given the opportunity to really delve into the good that is. And finally, it could be good if we surrender our spirit a little bit, if we humble ourselves in the face of this uncertainty, then it might actually turn out to be good 
and even very, very good. Shabbat Shalom.